Foundation, encouraging an informed community and visionaries like members of KLRN. The Texas legislature deregulated tuition at colleges and universities eight years ago, which resulted in increased tuition costs of 156 percent. Some members of the legislature want to get back into the regulation business because of that. In addition, the governor is calling on universities to offer a $10,000 degree for those who can't afford college. It's no wonder those same colleges are always looking for new sources of revenue. Enter realignment. There may be no direct link that college athletics benefits college academics, but sports means money. Money from ticket sales and especially money from television contracts, depending on what conference you're in. And right now, a lot of schools are shopping for new conferences. Joining me to discuss the realignment controversy is Chris Duell of the Chris and Jason Show on ESPN 1250 The Zone. Thank you, Chris, for being here. And Richard Oliver, senior writer for the San Antonio Express News. All right, Richard, Texas A&M announces that it's leaving the Big 12 for the SEC. Until the other day, it looked like UT, OU, Tech, and Oklahoma State were all going to the Pac-12. What's behind all of this? You know what's behind all this. It, it, the backdrop, the foundation, everything, it's all about money. It's all about what's about to happen. And you know, this has been, we're not talking a, a gradual evolution. This has been a evolution on steroids over the last few days. And you know, I think also though, the obvious answer is money, and that the schools are trying to position themselves and get into that financial uh, status that they wanna have, not just today, but 20 years down the road. But I think it's wisdom. I mean, I think there's a lot of foresight at work here. You know, we're in the middle of the tornado of this discussion. Absolutely. We're, we're right in the middle of it, and, we, and, and it's just, you know, Twitter, Facebook, all the, all the things that are flurrying around regarding this. Steve, I look at this as, foresight. There are schools who have looked at this and have said, look, Texas A&M, uh, full disclosure, I'm an Aggie. Mm -hmm. right? My daughters were Aggies. I've got Aggies all through my family. I'm really proud of the university right now. Going to the SEC was a hundred year plan, just as the president said. The idea being that let's establish what we know what's going to happen. We see what's happening and that is super conferences and it's all about money. But I also look at it as being all about foresight right now. Do you agree with that, Chris? I mean, I, I it seems to me that it may be a little bit more about money than about some of the other things. I, I lean more money than foresight, and while I agree with the foresight and the 100-year plan that Texas A&M is executing in the SEC, I'm wondering if the University of Texas might be overplaying the fact that right now they are Elvis and everybody else is the Jordan Airs. That, that Longhorn brand is not only national, it's global. It's the most recognizable, uh, it's the most marketable, it's the most sold logo. People love it, people love the brand, but I wonder if the perhaps hubris and, and somewhat of the arrogance that's being shown by Texas, if that might come back to bite them in the end. Right now, you know, the Big 12, as we speak, looks like it may survive for now. But what if Oklahoma isn't getting along with Texas? And as of now, it's not a wonderful relationship. Should the Oklahoma Sooners choose to leave the Big 12, there's not a whole lot left in the Big 12 for Texas to be proud of. Is this a case, though, where... Richard, UT gets $300 million from the Longhorn Network. I've heard a lot of the people saying the Big 12 looks like it's going to survive, but I don't, I haven't heard nothing about what they're going to do about the Longhorn Network. Well, the Big 12 has basically bowed, as they always do, to the University of Texas. They're going to allow them to have the Longhorn Network. Now, the problem for the Longhorns... But, but the, last night, the Big 12, uh, David Bourne from Oklahoma said, we're going to have everybody assign their media rights to the conference. That doesn't include the Longhorn Network. It will not include the Longhorn Network. There's no way. And, and let me, the, UT is the 800-pound gorilla in this whole discussion. Yeah. Listen, they run the Big 12. They run the situation. They run whether they all go to the, the Pac-12. The Pac-12 said, no, we don't want UT, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Texas Tech. We don't want that because we're not going to allow in the Pac-12 te Texas to have its Longhorn Network. We're not going to have this one renegade program over here having what they want. The Big 12 is saying, yes, we're going to let you have what they want. Because I'm telling you, Steve, UT will have that. UT is going to have that. Oklahoma is going to have their own network. The only reason, in my view, that the Big 12 is surviving right now, while everyone else is looking ahead and saying, look, there's going to be super conferences, we're going to position ourselves in the super conference, including Nebraska, right. Colorado, is the idea that in the Big 12, the Longhorn Network will survive. Texas is going to have its $300 million cash cow. 
that's not going to happen in the Pac-12 or the SEC or other conferences. But but will it be worth that over the long term is, is my question. Yeah, what are they going to have on there long term? Exactly. Morning? If the super conferences build in the SEC and the ACC and they tie up the big markets on the East Coast and the West Coast is the Pac-12, now maybe the Pac-16, uh, if, if you've got Oklahoma and Texas and then the rest of those schools, Iowa State, Kansas State, Iowa. I love Baylor, but as a television market, how big is Waco and how much reach do the Baylor <laughs> well, yeah. Bears have? Uh, I think as those other super conferences build, if the Big 12 stays as it is, it's not going to be as viable. And that $300 million contract for the Longhorn Network, 10 years from now, what will that be worth? Well, that, and that's the whole idea about the Longhorn Network, desperately needing high school football, desperately needing to put UT well, they games need, on They there. need content. They've got to yeah. have content, unless you, unless you love volleyball. Volleyball and soccer, great. <laughs> right. You know that's right. wonderful. Right. Baseball, but so that's the whole idea behind what's happening in in this whole landscape, and and the whole discussion is it's it's the temptation is to talk about what's happening right now in the now. The idea is to talk about, as I said, in the middle of this hurricane of of all this information, and everyone's just what the heck's going on hour by hour by hour. But really, the discussion is really we're talking five years down the road, ten, ten years down the road. That's where the real discussion is right now. So I think if everyone stepped back and said, okay. Let's look at this Longhorn Network situation. Let's look at this A&M situation. Look at the Big 12. It's really a 2021 discussion, in mm -hmm. my view. The idea of where is everything going to be in that time. Let me ask this question that I'm curious about, and either one of you can answer it. But the Longhorn Network only has Verizon, Fios, and Grande right now. It doesn't seem like there's a huge hue and cry to get the Longhorn Network. Do you see ESPN maybe saying, you know, this whole thing's not going to work. I, I think it's possible. And I think if you look at the NFL network and the fact that there is a, an outcry for the NFL network, but Time Warner Cable still has, has not established a deal with the NFL network, you know, Grande Communications in some Texas markets has it. Uh, with the outcry for the NFL network, a lot of these ca cable companies not making a deal, there's not that outcry for the Longhorn network. You know, we're on ESPN radio every day. And when the Longhorns played Rice and it was on the Longhorn Network, people who didn't get it, there, there was no outcry because there was no huge game. Now, if there were a huge game like Texas OU or Texas versus Texas A&M that people were missing, there would be an outcry. Without it, though, I think it's going to create a problem. Well, I think, and also when you talk about regional networks, when you talk about something that's labeled itself the Longhorn Network, you know, there's a line of demarcation there. Listen, there's Longhorns and there's everybody else. Yeah. So if you're in Waco, if you're in Lubbock, if you're in somewhere else, I'm telling you, if Time Warner comes to my door and said, you know what, Mr. Oliver, we want to charge you 40 cents more a month for the Longhorn Network. I'm saying, I'm an Aggie. Yeah. I'm not paying a quarter more right. for the Longhorn Network. Unless you give me something that's just a wonderful uh, uh, programming that I've just got to have. But as an Aggie, I'm, you know what, I'm going to watch the Aggies on ABC against LSU. Or I'm going to watch them against Alabama. And that's the big problem for the Longhorn Network. And I don't know if we talk about foresight. I don't know if ESPN in Texas thought that through. The idea that we're talking college athletics, we're talking about households who are sometimes you know, divided. Divided. Nebraska, yeah, Texas A&M, USC. I yeah. think that gets to what Chris was talking about. You know, when you've got, I think they just re assumed you've got a marketable perhaps the most marketable outside of Notre Dame I would argue mm -hmm. you know college right and you've got a great la a trademark you've got all these things it's a no-brainer I don't think they did think through the fact that even Texans are divided on whether they're a Longhorn family or they're a Sooner fam or Sooner not a Sooner family probably <laughs> but an Aggie family or Texas Tech or Baylor or all those different divisions but you know they it, it, listen it's the Mickey Mouse Network they, they had to have thought this through and they I, had to have. And, I, and I but I just wonder if and, and, and let's go from the other side from the business side from mm -hmm. Time Warner and from some of the bigger AT&T verse these other these these cable providers maybe they're also like us stepping back and saying man this is a this is a scrum let's just step back and see how this thing's going to play out before we're going to invest well, I or, think or ask our viewers to invest in something that's this is a mess right now what why do we want to be in that one of the ceos for direct tv as a matter of fact said you know i have a problem signing on to a network that i'm not sure what the programming is going to be right right yeah, and that seems to be the bottom yeah. line for them is, you know, hey two two games a year does not a network make two games and soccer and volleyball and right. things like that. But what does this mean for the universities? I mean, if you're a student at Texas, or you're a student at A&M, or you're a student at Baylor, what 
does this whole conference shuffle and whether the Big 12 will survive going to the SEC, what does that mean? I, I think one thing it means for super conferences is the, the student experience uh, for the student athletes. If Texas had gone to the Pac-12, becoming the Pac-16, uh, to do a, a road trip to, to Seattle to play the University of Washington or to Pullman to play Washington State uh, would have been brutal on student athletes other than football players who would fly very comfortably. Right. But for volleyball players or for the tennis team or, or some other people, it would be difficult. And for if you want to go see your team, right, right now, if, if you're a Longhorn or an Aggie or a Baylor Bear or a Texas Tech Red, Red Raider, most of those games in the state of Texas or in Oklahoma, it's a pretty easy road trip. Uh, I, I think it will change that experience as well for alumni, for students, and for fans. Now you're saying every week's a bowl game, in effect. Yes. I mean, if, if Texas A&M is going to Florida or going someplace else, it's a bowl game. Uh, and that's the big discussion, too, is the other side of this whole thing is you got to take care of yourself financially if you're an institution. You know, we, we opened up talking about academics. Right. I mean, and that's my, that's my point in this yeah. whole thing. Is it a trickle-down effect? Well, and that's the thing. We have to always remember that we talked about line of demarcations in colleges. There's academics and there's athletics, and there is a separation. I mean, uh, any money that goes from the athletic pool into the academic pool is very minor. Right. And, and, and the other discussion is, uh, a report came out a few years ago, the number of programs in this country that make money athletically is very small. I mean, to actually have a profit year after year. A&M had to get a loan a couple of years ago from the university to take care of some situations on the athletic side. So you understand taking care of things in athletics, it's gonna get even more expensive. And that's another discussion about, okay, forget academics. I, I don't want to say forget academics. I sent two kids through at Texas A&M. Sure. I know what it costs. Yes. You know, yeah. And is costing. You know, but I look at those kind of things. When you look at the athletic side, if you're Texas A&M, you're going to the SEC for the fact, listen, it, we need this money. We need stability in the long run. We borrowed money from the university just trying to keep things going there for a while. Your UT, you have the biggest athletic pro, uh, budget in the, in the world. And somehow you've got to fuel that beast every year. When you say stability, what you mean is you know 10, 20, 30 years from now the SEC is going to be there. Exactly. Can you say the same thing for the Big 12? Uh, you can't. And, and given what we know, I would predict the Big 12 won't be there six years from now, as they're right now discussing a six-year plan. And, and some people have said as well, you, you look at the SEC, if these super conferences emerge on the East Coast and the West Coast, you look at the television markets on each side of the coast, the SEC in the South, really right now, it is the best football conference in all of college football. Will that be the case five years from now, seven years from now, 10 or 20 years from now? It might not. It might be the ACC on the East Coast and the Pac-16 or the Pac-24 right. on the West Coast. And uh, you know, every, every year a Boise State pops up, you know, kind yeah. of messes up the whole equation. But I do think that the SEC, just by just tradition and just the, the, the matchups week after week after week, and that's another thing as we, we started talking about in the Big 12, Oklahoma against Iowa State is just not going to move any meters. You know, right. Baylor against Texas Tech, just not going to, uh, all apologies to those schools, they're not moving any meters. And it's really, Steve, you brought it up, it's all about branding. It's all about spreading your brand. So you talk about building an Alamo Dome and operating at a deficit every year, but does San Antonio, has it benefited from the Alamo Dome every year? Yeah, athletic programs are the same way. You're, even if you're operating at a deficit, seeing Texas A&M or seeing Texas, the, the ubiquitous Longhorn brand yes. everywhere, that's one of those things that I think makes a big difference. Spread your brand around the country, and that's what's happening with these colleges. All right, Richard Oliver, Chris Duell, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Evan Smith of the Texas Tribune.